<laughs> Someday I should say A.W. Tozer. It's such fun. It really is. I get a, a kick. I don't just get a kick. I get great enjoyment out of sitting down reading these devotionals, devotionals, as they are, taking the time to consider them as I speak, it's like I'm thinking of them at the same time, and it's like I'm hearing God speak to me through my own voice, and I've described it before to people when those few times that I've shared or been a speaker and spoken in front of churches that often... I don't come with notes, because Jesus said, don't think about what you're going to say ahead of time. So too with the devotionals, you know, it's like, if you ever ask me to come speak at your church, guess what? <laughs> don't ask for my notes ahead of time. If there's one or two scriptures written down, that'd be a surprise. But don't think that I don't know the scriptures. <laughs> but Jesus said that, don't consider ahead of time what you might say or speak because your Heavenly Father knows what you need and that He would give you the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit would put the words in your mouth at the time that you need them. So when you come before magistrates or before churches or before leaders, before the judge, before the courts, before anywhere, don't think about it. Just be you. And God in you will speak. And so a lot of times I just, I love and I enjoy and I look so forward to the time of, there's only eight devotionals that I record during the day and, and the rest of the time I'm posting them and then writing things and, you know, answering comments or making comments, I should say, on sometimes some little things that seem to be off on a tangent that have gone over this way or somehow they got a bad attitude so you kind of work them back towards a good attitude and, you know those are nice things to do but you know the part I delight in the part I just go, oh, <laughs> I just can't get enough of is right now it's God sitting here with me sharing with me and you his word and making it real in my life and it's like I, I, I almost get done, like if uh, when you see me walk away, I go inside and I'm like, oh wow, that was cool, ah! <laughs> You know, it's like so enjoyable. It's like, it's like eating a T-bone, or it's like, okay, if you're a vegetarian. <laughs> Oi, <laughs> you know, Oi, they, we be vegetarian. Da, 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 da. But it's like biting into a pomegranate and getting all that bloody kind of red stuff all over your face and just wiping it off and <sighs> delicious or a good orange or an apple the same thing applies but the point is is that when the Lord said taste and see that the Lord he is good this is what he meant you and I together all of us whoever you are wherever you are sharing and caring and participating in what God is doing by his Holy Spirit because whether you do it now or whether you look at this later or whenever you see it and whenever you do it it's you and i together we're sharing with jesus would speak and share and do with us and isn't that cool isn't that neat i mean if it doesn't fit you then hey you know i'll be the first one to tell you go somewhere find out for yourself if this isn't it don't do it believe me whatsoever god tells you to do that you should do but if it's connecting with you, if God is really, you know, putting it together in the circumstances of your life and it's just like meshing, it's like, ooh, that's a tight fit, but it fits, you know, or it does fit perfect, then that's the Lord. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's why I do this. I get a kick out of it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not out for gain, you know, like I'm going to make some money. Oh, yeah, real. <laughs> there is no cost. It's all free. There's no gain. There's no profit. You know, I'm not getting famous. <laughs> if anything, I'm becoming infamous for being a nut. I'm crazy. <laughs> but the beauty of it is that Jesus is making a connection with you and with me. 
and he's giving us something that maybe someone else doesn't have. Or maybe they do, and we want them to share with it too, and we connect and we all become one. Isn't that great? At a time when the world is falling apart, we're falling together. I think that's neat. I think that's what God intended. Do we really long for our Lord to come? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Matthew 16:27. The joyful and personal element in what we call the blessed hope, the return of Christ to earth, seems to be altogether missing in our day. Not around me, it ain't. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Come on. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Any day, Lord. There's clouds. Come on. Can we go? <laughs> maybe not. If the Maybe so. If the tender yearning is gone for the Advent hope, there must be reasons for it. I think I know what they are. One is simply that popular fundamentalist theology has emphasized the utility of the cross rather than the beauty of the one who died on it. The saved man's relation to Christ or Jesus has been made contractual instead of personal. The work of Christ has been stressed until it has eclipsed the person of Jesus. And what he did for me seems to be more important than what he is to me. Who is Jesus to you? Do you know? Redemption is seen as a across-the-counter transaction, which we accept, and the whole thing lacks emotional content. We bartered for our salvation, and now we go on our way for our own self-determination. We must love someone very much to stay awake and long for his coming. And that may explain the absence of power in the Advent hope or the anticipation and the looking for and longing and yearning and talking and experiencing the belief and knowledge that Jesus is coming soon. That is what we should be doing. History reveals that times of suffering for the church have also been times of looking upward for the Lord. Tribulation has always sobered God's people and encouraged them to look for and to yearn after his return and the return of their Lord. God will wean us from the earth some way, the easy way if possible, the hard way if necessary. You know, I can't, I mean, I could, you know, if you came over and, you know, we talked, you know, I'd have no problem convincing you that you were going to see Jesus return. We are the last generation. That's the easy part it doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. I mean, there are a few basic principles and scriptures that you can look at in the Bible. You can use theology. You can use eschatology. You can use whatever you want to as far as just scientific principles to say, hey, these are the facts. This is what it said. This is what happened. This is where we're at. This is what it said would happen. And this is what's happening. Bingo. You're it. This is the last generation. So, some people... You know, go, okay, yeah, I believe that, and then they go right on their way. And make no choice to know Jesus personally about what he's doing and how he's looking forward to seeing you. Did you know that? Do you even think of that thought? Jesus is looking forward to seeing you. Imagine that. The Son of God, the man who died on the cross that you've heard everything about, that maybe you don't know as personal as someone else does. Maybe you've never heard his voice. Maybe you've never had him speak to you. Maybe you just have an image of him that's like a, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, you know, and maybe you've just got a childlike anticipation. Can I tell you something? You're missing out. <laughs> I mean, you need a better definition. You can, in a very personal and real way, know the Son of God. Jesus said that, Behold, and he was speaking to the church now. Remember this. Think very carefully about what I'm saying right now. This is Jesus standing in heaven, looking at all the churches. He's walking in the midst of all the churches. And he's making this statement to one of them. And he says, Behold, look very carefully. 
I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door and let me in, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. I think Jesus isn't talking about some spiritual heart that we have because, frankly, I don't find no doorway in my heart. I don't think that Jesus is talking about non-believers and using that for salvation. I think Jesus is talking to you and to me and that our doorway, mine, is straight over there and that if there's a knock at the door, am I willing to be listening to the Lord coming and opening the door and making him welcome? Because, you know, Jesus says something interesting about entertaining angels unaware. What if we could entertain the Lord unaware? Or better yet, since the Lord already knows that we wouldn't entertain him, that's why he hasn't knocked at our door yet. Is your home open to Jesus? I think you want to get to know Jesus a little better. You know why? He's coming. It's not Santa that's coming. It's not New Year's that's coming. It's not Friday that's coming. And it's not Sunday that's coming. Jesus is coming. And he's coming very soon. And I am thrilled to tell you that yes, Jesus is coming. My entire life has been built around knowing, knowing and planning for that event. And being recognized as knowing that there would come many in those days that would think that this was the time and they were wrong, or this was the time and they were wrong. And I'm not telling you that, oh, well, I'm just supposed to provoke you to think that he's coming because he's really not going to come in 40 years or 50 years or 60 years. Let's be clear. I'm telling you that you are going to see the Son of God return. Now, you may see him as the Son of Man return in the clouds for the rapture, for him to snatch away, to come and bid that they who were watching for him would rise up with him into the clouds. I don't say that it's going to be quite the way some people describe it, but that's between them and the Lord. But I do say to you that if you're looking for his coming, then maybe Jesus wants you to go with him in the rapture. But if not, even if not, I will say to you that yes, Jesus is coming, and you will live to see it and you will not see your grandchildren grow up. So how long is that? Do we have as much as 60 years? Nope. 40 years? Nope. Am I making you nervous? 30 years? Nope. I can tell you within the next 10 to 20 years, and it ain't gonna happen in 2012. <laughs> Sorry. But anytime after 2012, don't be surprised. You don't have much time left. I suggest you get your house in order. And the way you do that is just simply get to know Jesus. Now, I have just said on a video that's going to be on the internet forever, you've only got maybe 20 years. Guess what? I'm either a complete blithering idiot, or you can ask God about it. And He, your Father, just might tell you what you need to know about Jesus coming again. No man knows the day or the hour, but the Father does. Why not ask him? You might be surprised if he answers you.